Oh, wow. Hey, look. Oh, hey. Oh, <clears throat> welcome to the uh, Steve Dave Double Shot Movie Review here on YouTube. I'm Steve. I'm Dave. And, uh, damn, it's been a while since we did one of these. Mike Stain, it has. I, I don't know. <laughs> I hope I, I, we not, might not have made one all summer. I don't know. But, hey, we're back. And uh, yeah. the prayers are answered. The last one was, um... Nosferatu and, uh... uh the... City of Lost Children, that and that, that was, was a while ago, and we're doing this one on a whim to get back in the motion, so we're going to be rusty. Usually we do some fact-finding and try to know little things for you, but what do we know about these two we have tonight? Well, tonight we got 1991's The People Under the Stairs from Wes Craven. The name in horror. And 2011's Thing Prequel? Thing, thing Cool? cool. The thing cool. Yeah. Um, usually we'll hold up a box or something. There's no box. I, I left my people under the stairs at home. And we filmed at Steve's house, by the way. And uh, the uh, thing cool's not out yet. So, so who? 2011's The Thing Cool. Uh -huh. um, Steve, kick us off. 1991, Wes Cravens, which, by the way, he'd never fucking seen. I think I'm the last person on earth to see this movie. I've yeah. known about it since it came out. I just, you know, there's those movies you never get around to seeing until we agreed, and we're doing this for you, Matt. Uh, reviewed this movie. Anyway. Yeah, one of our um, fans. Our number followers. one fan, Matt K. Number, he's our number one fan. Big homie. Um, anyway, and this is 1991's... Based uh, on a true story. Really? What? Two people had some kids they kept in their basement. Oh. That's it. So it's kind of like how Freddy was derived from a store in the yeah, yeah, but that's it. There's nothing else. But anyway, let's kick it off. This movie is, uh... It's, uh... It was okay. It's a coming-of-age horror film. About a guy named Fool who wants to A boy to be, named Fool. A boy named Fool growing up in the slums of L.A., I believe. And... I thought it was New York. No, I said... Is it palm trees? Um, anyway, um... So, uh... Ving Rhames is a local hood and he hangs... Her, well, okay, let's go back. Fool is like a 13-year-old boy whose mom is dying of cancer. And they don't have any money for rent or for her to fight her cancer. And supposedly it's real easy to cure. All they need is right. the money. They need the money and they're getting yeah, evicted because no. they can't I make it. find that rent. comes back around a lot throughout the whole movie is everything would be okay if you just had, had the money, yeah. yeah. And Ving Rams is a local hood that hangs out with the family and he's like, hey, you know, we need some gold from the fucking landlord. Yeah, so oh, and they're about to be closing down their building. Oh, building. Um, what they upped the rent astronomically well, so no one could yeah, afford they, it. Everybody or, moved out except for Fool's family and they want to blow the buildings over and build new condos and make more money. Because condos in the ghetto make yeah, sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Gentrification. Yeah. Um, anyway, so Ping Rams and Fool and Hatch a plan to go rip off the landlords. With some dude. Yeah, with some white dude. I forgot his name. Anyway, there's apparently some gold Chet. pieces. Yeah. Gold pieces in the house, which will yield them a lot of money, and they can pay the rent and fight the cancer and everything. So they go in to get it. Thus, the adventure begins. And uh, the house fools first foray into the house. Yeah. Where he finds there's a pretty daughter who seems normal, but a something's just not right. AJ Langer of Escape from LA fame and. In my so-called life, if anybody remembers that show. Also, Fool's older sister is the chick from Nightmare 5. Hmm. The swimming chick. She is. Is this Ving Rhames' theatrical debut? I would maybe bet on that. I Whatever. So. It's yeah. early Ving Rhames. You gotta love Ving Rhames. Yeah. Um, um, but uh, the adventure ensues. He finds that there are people living... Under the stairs? I believe so. And, uh... The, the kids are kind of tortured by the ways of hear no evil, see no evil, speak. They cut their ears off or cut their tongues out. And they're super, super crazy Christian fundamentalists who, brother and sister, who live there and they want everyone to burn in hell. Yeah, and, burn in hell is yeah, commonly yeah. said throughout the movie. The, uh, the brother, did he come across to you as uh, kind of Bruce Campbell-esque? The brother... Oh no, he's the dude who plays the preacher in Silver Bullet. He's the werewolf. Yeah, it just says oh, mannerisms. I've never seen Silver Bullet. I just gave away the uh, twist. 
But uh, <coughs> it's not just his mannerisms and kind of the way he carried himself, kind of Bruce yeah. Campbell esque, huh? Didn't see it at all, but... I did like him in the Gimp mask and the hell I'd get up with the shotgun, and that was great. Um, all in all, it's a. Uh, it's a. It's a coming of age tale of. Um, classism? It's got uh, some under some racial and uh, financial, or what do you call that? I got a message from, yeah, yeah, because the message I got from the whole movie is it's not about money is to be earned, it's about money is to be found from someone. I mean, no one had the idea of, let's go get jobs. Nah. nah, They're like, no, these people have the money and it's wrong. They shouldn't have it. Yeah, well, yeah. You never see one like, man, just leave me there, shit, let's go do our own. Maybe that's just me, I don't know. Maybe. Working, man, that's so passe. Let's go occupy Wall Street. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> um, but, I mean, granted, the people, should share it, they were some shithead villains. They were. Yeah. You know. Crazy ass and, house with all kinds of traps. Yeah, but it never occurred to them to, you know, do something with their lives. Instead, they should just start. Like, I don't, I don't get into that on national broadcast. YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. But anyway, it's an entertaining flick. It's, um, I wouldn't say it's one of Wes Craven's best movies. The, he's usually hits it out of the park or totally or misses. Fucking stinker. This is somewhere he kind of is in the middle on. I don't know. Oh, he misses. It's but it still has a. Has some redeemable value. Some about it you kind of like. Yeah. I'd give it, um. I'd give it two. Two, two one shit of, bars. Yeah, one and a half, two. I mean, it is worth seeing. I bought it in a triple pack that came with um, Shocker, which, yeah. Oh, West and, Craven. Um, it was a West Craven pack. And the Serpent and the Rainbow, which I think I, that's his London call. Um, Never Serpent seen that one. I'll have to review that one. Never seen Damn. All right. Um, but, uh, yeah, I give it one and a half, two shit balls, stars. I mean, it. Yeah. It's alright. Watch it. I mean, it's that. Watch it for Ben Rams if nothing it's else. A, Get attacked by a raw wall. It's a, Matt's favorite Wes Craven movie. Our one follow up, one follower guy who requested that. It's his favorite. Nah. You're wrong, Matt. You're wrong. Tell him the world. The one kid that lived in the walls is that guy who's in the commercial. Who looks world. like. Heidi Fleiss. He does look like Heidi Fleiss. He looks like Heidi Fleiss. The guy was also in Jury Duty and that and he was that milk commercial. Famous thing. madam that sent Charlie Sheen all those suckers. Heidi Fleiss. Doesn't he? It, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Like if they had sex, it'd be like he fucking himself. Yeah. It's fucked up. Anyway, people under the stairs. I finally saw it 20 years after release. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> This Cheers to uh, something else. Mm, that was nice. Well, coming coming up, we got 2011's The Thing. Cool, pretty cool. Damn. Five. What does that mean? Uh, five stars. We'll see. Welcome back, America and the world. He's Steve. And I'm Dave. And we're back at you with The, the Thing Quill, 2011. Is this movie 20 years, or 30 years, pardon me, in the making? Mm, not so much. Not so much. And geez, couldn't they have called it The Thing before or something? The Thing Quill. I just had How lazy of... Uh, I don't it. care if they called it The Thing, but here we are reviewing The Thing 2011, directed by some European guy. Um, and uh, what we have here is the prequel to John Carpenter's The Thing. What year was John Carpenter's The Thing? 82. Exactly. The year I dropped. For some reason, I thought it was, I always thought it was 80. I love one of my most favorite movies. He was making the fall. Did we review The Thing? Yeah. We did, and I think I got five. That was great. Sorry. But anyway, this is a prequel. Um, and uh, what it starts in is with the Norwegian camp. 
Um, and if you watch the trailers, and we saw the trailers, and we were first little because there's some American chicken and all that. And we're like, Mary well, Elizabeth Winstead, whoever the hell oh, that Death is. Death Proof, Scott Pilgrim, and Final Destination Three. Who was she? Death Proof. She was the cheerleader girl who sang. Then recognize her. Yeah, she didn't really do much. Um, but uh, we saw the trailer. And we're like, come on, they're Norwegians. Come on, but. The way they work in the Americans, it works. Makes sense. It works. And what we have here is basically a Norwegian group, and they find the thing. Um, I look, I thought it was a pretty cool movie because it does. The pacing of it is a little strange. It starts off a little too quick paced, a little too uh, in your face. Mm -hmm. Because when you watch John Carpenter's The Thing, there's a little more uh, tension building. And stealthiness to oh, it, yeah. but later the movie does break way into that, and it's 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 you know pretty good. Um, one cool thing is is you, all the uh, carcasses and that they find in the um, original thing, well, uh, are accounted for. Um, yeah, are accounted for. Um, it's but it's in a lot of ways it's really just a rehash of Carpenter. Well, well what can you do with it, what Steve? What can you do? I mean, what should they be like, let's do kind of a Brewster's Millions thing. Yeah, yeah. Then. No, there's, nah. you're on fucking Antarctica with a fucking alien. What do you think's gonna happen? Exactly. I thought that part was fine. What I didn't like was there are a few elements or occurrences in the movie where you're like, hold on. What the fuck did that just happen for? couple of things that are a little like, why did we need that? There's and, a crash um, involving an uh, air vehicle, which is kind of like... Hmm. The crash was fine. But it's what it did. Well, it just... It, it, why the hell did it do that? people surviving it. Really? I don't I care about it. that. You're watching a movie about an alien on a block of ice. I can suspend a little disbelief for that. Mm -hmm. You know, so what? They survived. Yeah. Big deal. Help keep the story moving. Whatever does that, you know, keep it moving. The guy from Animal Kingdom's in it. Oh, I don't even know his name. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good movie. It's Australian. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, that's cool. I mean, it was cool. The only thing I didn't like is they made the thing uh, yell, scream, roar. Yeah, it was a little too much. Way too, way too much. It would have been creepier if they did, like in the original, get that low guttural S and the wall. That was fine. Yeah. That, that, that would have been cool, but I mean, it fucking just it, it, belts. It, it screams. Did you notice the part I told you about? They're louder than the explosion. Yeah. And you're a little like, made your fucking ears bleed. It's like too much of that Transformers business just in the face. Shit. Yeah. But I will say, as far as new horror movies go, it was it, it, it was killed for the decade of yeah. new horror. It was quality as far as overall. Yes. Yeah, so not too much CGI. Not too much. They even say there was the CGI that was in it was actually really good, especially when it's bent backwards and there's two heads. That, I gotta say that was damn good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't see any practical effects. I heard tale of such, but it not saw some practical in there. Where? I can't remember offhand, it's been a couple weeks since I saw it. I don't know. But, uh. Yeah. yeah, well, I know about this movie as it was being made. So did everyone, Steve. Pretty much, you know, what I expected. I was not thrilled or let down. I thought it was a little better than I expected, except for the screaming. Yeah, this was the only part. I think they'll fix that for the home. I wish they would. If you're out there watching, Universal, that, it takes out the fucking creepiness of it. It, it neuters it. Yeah. And um, you know, at least still in 3D. Today's kids might need that kind of shit, but I, I still like to really watch a movie and uh, enjoy it, and not cringe. I mean, it's not Godzilla. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Godzilla screams. I don't know. The thing works in stealth, and a little bit when it gets the stealthiness of it. I will say, as far as new horror movies go, it is great. Um, do you can though? They did do this, and I have to give them credit. When it comes out on disc, you can watch it, eject it, put in the thing, and it goes very much so. Yes, like it would be one big movie. 
Except you'd watch it, you'd be like, man, the second half of that movie is so much better. Because it was directed by John Carpenter. It has Kurt Russell. Yeah. Keith David. Wolf from Grimley. And that guy, Norris. I always forget his real name, but I recognize him from so many yeah, other That one guy. Oh, and the guy from The Warriors, too. He's a... Oh, yeah, Thomas Waits. Yeah. He was a warrior. Yeah. He was a warrior. And then that guy that watched The Dogs, who's in all those movies. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um... But do check it out. I'd say it's worth seeing in the theaters. I give it a. Well, it's probably by this point the dollar theaters. Yeah, probably. The way um, it moves nowadays. But if you have a dollar theater still in your town, we don't. Two dollars. Yeah, unfortunately, well, it was on Spartanburg, but who the fuck wants to go there? Yeah. Um, I give it a two and a half, three stars. Three. I give it three and a half. Yeah, I give it three. I say as far as new horror goes, because think about it. <clears throat> when was the last time you saw a horror movie made since the mid '90s in the theater that was good? Remember when we once saw a remake of Fright Night? What the fuck were we thinking? Be glad we didn't review that. Um, I'll review it right well, now. I, I saw no. Call me crazy, but going into it, I didn't know nothing about it. I like the ring, the original ring, the American remake. And I can see that was before America went all um, yeah, J horror crazy, you yeah. know. Yeah. And the Japanese love some fucking ghosts. That was cool. <laughs> um, and, and and I did pretty much the same premises. I wanted to see Blair Witch. And I liked Blair Witch. I didn't like Blair Witch at all. You didn't see nothing. It was your mind that scared you. But anyway, those are just two instances I. But, but what I'm saying is... Horror, new horror is few and far between. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying is is you look at the thing, cool, and it was, well, there are a couple parts at the beginning where you don't know how the movie's going to flow, and you're like, something's not right, but it, it ebbs out and evens off. It, go see it. It's good. You'll dig it. Huh. You dig it the most. So, yeah. I give it three, three and a half. Now, compared to Carpenter's thing... Nah. 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 Pales. Mm-hmm. Not like Ailes either. And all that shit was happening right in front of you, too. It was real shit. Real Touch shit. It. Um, yeah, how about a shout for the thing, cool? Anyway, America, thanks for tuning in with us. We'll, we'll be coming back at you. We're a little rusty tonight. Yeah. Probably because he just came in, we just shot. Usually we get getting drunk. A little drunker, yeah. Yeah. So we're judges right now. Yeah. Um, but, uh, do, um,. Send in any comments, questions, questions. We appreciate the feedback and the new subscribers. Hey, yeah, I noticed yeah, you. Thank you. Subscribe. Thank you so much. And uh, questions are always welcome and movie requests. Request the movie, we'll review it. You might tell us something we've never seen before. Dreams be really do come cool. true here at the Steve Day Double Shot. Movie. Yeah, you just keep on dreaming them. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Whatever, yeah. That was, something. Uh, yeah. Smile you later.